So what we're looking at here is the prize giving page, which you'll find in any of the Numberella Tiger Edition brain training books. And I'm gonna explain what these stickers are, how I got them, and how to use this section of the book. So first of all, I've got a gold for my best set. And we can see that my best set, we go back to the exercise which I completed off screen. My best set was this one, which I did in 26 seconds, okay? Now, this has also been marked, and we can see that there were no incorrect answers in set six, which means that 26 seconds is my final time. So I can write that in there. There we go, 26.00 seconds. Now, for the sake of argument, let's call this a personal best. Now, because it's a personal best, I get this sticker here, the personal best sticker. And very nice it is too. All right. Now, 26 seconds is just tantalizingly close to an ant, okay? But it's in fact a gold, which is why I get this gold sticker, okay? Had I gone one second faster, I would have got the ant sticker uh, and so on. If I'd gone nine seconds slower, then I would have got the silver sticker or rather 10 seconds slower. Um, the rule is that if you get, let's say, the threshold stands at 25 seconds, which is what the ant threshold is. If I score 25.49, then I can round that down and I can get my ant. But if I got 25.50, then I would not be able to round it down and I would get a gold. Okay, so those are the rules for that. Let's just get rid of those. Um, so that's how we get the best set prize. Um, now, the slowest set time. Now, you might wonder why we have a slowest set time. And the reason is that the slowest set gives us an insight into the volatility of the student and also an insight into their concentration stamina. Okay, If someone is able to put very similar times together across all six of these sets, then we know that they have a good concentration stamina. They're, they are reliable when called upon to deliver high concentration, uh, high velocity and high accuracy. Okay, now of course in an exam, particularly if it's a multiple choice exam, which is what many of the exams are today, then that's exactly what you need. You need to be able to deliver your best quickly and accurately. That's how you're gonna get the top grades. So this exercise is very good for preparing students to that end. Now, the slowest set here well, you can see we've got a, a 35.24 and we've got a 36.27. Now, it's actually going to be this one here, the 35.24, which is going to give us our slowest lap. Why? Well, because we've, we've made two mistakes here. You can see 4 times 12, not 36, and 9 times 7, not 62. And for each of those mistakes, we have to add a 6 second penalty, a time penalty. Uh, it's a bit like car rallying where if you make a mistake or whatever you hit an obstacle you you have to add seconds onto your time so we have to add six seconds for each incorrect answer so this 35 24 we have to add 12 seconds to it so it becomes 47 24 and that is our slowest set time 47 24 now this is obviously a demonstration we don't know whether that's our best slowest slap or not but um, let's just pretend that it is because it's more fun like that and actually what you'll find is in the early days of doing this book students will do more best slowest laps than they will do best quickest laps the reason being that it's harder to go at a lifetime best speed but actually what generally happens in these books is that the consistency of the student improves sometimes incredibly dramatically over the course of the early exercises. So, you know, you might see someone taking two minutes at the beginning, their slowest lap time will be two minutes, but after maybe only five or six exercises, that will have gone up to one minute and, you know, they won't drop below it again. You know, it's a wonderful thing to be able to say to someone, listen, this is where you were, you know, at your worst when you started. And now look, your, your, your worst has got three or four times better. It's a radical improvement. And you draw the line on the graph and the student goes, wow, that's amazing, I can do that? And you're like, yeah, and it only took you a week. Imagine what you could do in three weeks. And, um, you know, they like hearing that because it's a way of turning a negative into a positive. And that's why it's really important to plot this uh, slowest set time and, and celebrate that PB because actually raising the basement of a student's performance is arguably more important than, than raising their outright top speed. Although, of course, that is a wonderful thing to see happening as well. 
Okay, so that's the, the quicker set time and the slower set time. Now let's take a look back here as well. What was our hand speed and what does hand speed mean? Well, what hand speed means is literally how long did it take us to write out all the answers? And it's actually a measure of your, your athletic ability in, in terms of handwriting. How much hand stamina have you got? You'll find a lot of a lot of children at the age of eight or nine or ten, you know, when they're moving into this book, they won't actually have written at full speed before for this long. And so, of course, it makes their hand ache. And that can be a bit of a put-off for some students. They're like, my hand aches, I don't want to do it anymore. But you've got to say to them, listen, it's good that your hand aches because you're developing strength. You're developing hand stamina. And they're like, huh, oh, oh, okay. And um, if you speak about it in those terms, it's actually a great thing and you can use it to encourage them to, to greater effort. And of course, it is. In, uh, until the day comes, if it ever comes, where we no longer use handwriting in assessments, then the strength of your hand and the stamina of your hand is absolutely fundamental across all subjects that require writing. You know, you think about it in terms of English. Uh, if you can write 50% faster than the guy next to you, you're going to have that much more time to write that story. And in a maths paper, it's also true. If How many time, how many digits do you have to write in a maths paper? You have to write 200, 400, 600? It depends, of course, on the maths paper. But if you're writing all of those twice as fast as someone else, then you're just going to be able to complete that paper more quickly than they are. Assuming, of course, that you can think twice as fast as them. And, and of course, this exercise is serving both of those purposes. But anyway, the hand speed is the total time that it took you to write before time penalties or time bonuses. And in the case of this exercise here, that total is 3 minutes and 2.89. Now, as I've mentioned, if you make a mistake in your test, then for each mistake you have to add 6 seconds. So looking quickly back, we here have got 3 mistakes to count, so that's 18 seconds to add onto this 3 minutes and 2, which conveniently takes us up to 3.20, a nice round number. So we can see that our total time would be 3.20.89, but we have to remember that we get those bonuses for writing our date and time, and of course setting our goal. So having done all of those things here, we've got a 5 second bonus to take into account. So our 3.20.89 becomes a 3.20.89. Fifteen point eight nine. Okay. Now, let's say that this is also a PB, the hand speed, as is the exercise speed. And there we go. We've got PBs across the board. Something to celebrate. Now, here and here on the left and right, you can see we have these boxes which are for corrections. Now, let's have a look and see what mistakes were made in this exercise. You can see that we've made four times twelve is thirty-six incorrectly and we've done 9 times 7 is 62. So those are two mistakes that we need to make a note of. So let's write them down. We've got 4 times 12 and 9 times 7. So we have 4 times 12 equals and 9 times 7 equals. Now there was another mistake on there wasn't there? Look at that. 10 times something is 30. All right now we have to write that down in the right way. So we do 10 times something equals 30. All right, And this is just a little introduction to the different types that we have here. We've got the X type, the Y type, and the Z type, and we have to recreate the corrections according to those. Now, as you can see, very faintly written in these answer boxes are the letters X, Y, and Z. Now, this is giving the student the chance to consider that X can be a number, that Y can be a number, that Z can be a number. So it's just a, a little hint at algebra. I mean, realistically, when the kids are rushing through this, they're not particularly thinking about the fact that there's an X there. They're just uh, writing numbers on top of it. But of course, when you come to go through this book with them, you can talk about that X, Y, and Z being any number. Such a critical message for algebra and something which is um, so hard, really, to, to conceptualize when you're learning uh, maths. Okay, so at this point, we're going to put in the correct answers to these questions, and I'm going to change the color. So we're going to go 4 times 12 is 48. 9 times 7 is 63, and 10 times 3 is 30. And that way we can keep track of which types we're more likely to get wrong. Now, it so happens in this exercise that I've got the Z type wrong twice and the Y type wrong once. What you'll find is that different students will have different bents, if you like. Um, some people will get X wrong, they'll find that really difficult. Some people will get Y wrong, 
And occasionally people will get Z wrong, although of course, because most people learn Z first, that's the one that most people are generally faster at. So that's what we do with those little boxes there. And if someone has made lots and lots of mistakes, then of course the boxes can be divided in half. So we can have five times something equals 20. We could have four times something equals 12 and so on. So we can make up to 16 mistakes in an exercise and still have space for the corrections. Okay, so there we go. That, that's the protocol more or less discussed. The only thing left is what are these boxes for down at the bottom? What are they for? Well, these are your goal setting boxes. Now, looking up at my time, I can see that I, my exercise speed here is 3 minutes 15.89. Now, setting a bronze goal would mean that I would take five seconds off that time. So my next goal in, in the next exercise, if I was going for bronze, would be 3 minutes 10.89. And I would actually move forward to the next exercise. I don't have it uh, available here, so I'm just going to pretend. And I would write that goal into the goal box. 3 minutes 10.89. And that would be my new goal. That would be a bronze goal. In terms of goal setting, let the student set what they feel comfortable with. It's nice to achieve that goal achieved sticker. But, you know, if you find someone just recording a bronze goal every time and exceeding that bronze goal easily, then you can encourage them to be a bit more ambitious. Go and, go and set that silver goal, go and get that gold goal. And it's also possible to set up a, what's called an incentive program, which means that your goals actually become affiliated with ant coins. If a student starts at the beginning of the book and gets a bronze and they set an ant goal every single exercise and achieve an ant goal every single exercise then by the end of the book they will be getting an ant time. Now that's quite challenging. It's quite challenging to go from bronze up to ant in one book but it can be done and you know if a student is ambitious and wants to set that big goal for themselves then that's fine. Set your sights high. Uh, even if you fail by a little bit you'll still have done very well. Okay so no harm in being ambitious. You can, of course, talk about the motivational phrases, smashed it, well done, you know, tell them those things. Really use this page to develop a motivational narrative for the student. Every time they complete an exercise, there will usually be something good to talk about, even if they just got one personal best, even if they just got their best slowest lap, uh, even if they got their best hands. It doesn't really matter. There's four opportunities every exercise to get a personal best. And when you've got a personal best, it means you just became better than you've ever been before. Think about that for a second. What a powerful thing to say to somebody who's growing. They may never even consider that they could be good at anything. And you're now telling them that they're better than they've ever been before. It's such a powerful thing to say to a student and it will really feed their self-belief and make them want eventually to do it for themselves. You know, the ultimate goal of these books is to make the exercises something which contributes to the student's self-esteem. The subject becomes a net positive for their, their, their personal outlook, for their self-esteem, the way they perceive themselves. Okay, We make math something that makes them feel better. And that's what you can do by celebrating enthusiastically all of these things that you've got the students doing. So yeah, good luck with the use of the book. Uh, I hope it works for you as well as it's worked for me over all of these years. Uh, I can honestly say that it's a game changer and it's helped scores, if not hundreds of students, achieve, uh, achieve great things in this wonderful subject. So, enjoy.